All right, everybody, let's jump into the live demo. Um, today, myself, John Meyer uh, from Atlassian and Jonathan Rao from AWS will be walking you through exactly how AWS Security Hub integrates with Ops Genie. All right, everybody, so right now we are in the uh, findings page underneath compliance standards. You can see there on the left. So if you hadn't used Security Hub before, um, the compliance standards navigation pane gives you individual, individualized views rather into our different um, compliance standards. And this one in particular, it's the uh, CIS AWS foundations controls. So the control that we're looking at specifically is a uh, 4.1, ensure no security group allows ingress from 0.0, um, .0 you know, from the internet to port 22. Um, so this is pretty much any time that you have, you know, unfettered public access um, on SSH for your security groups, this control will evaluate as a failure. And in and of itself, it may not be such a big deal. You know, you already are using key pairs. However, you know, if you spill a key pair and you're not, and you don't have any control about who could connect over uh, secure shell sessions, then, you know, potentially threat actors could get access to your resources. And additionally, it will also open you up for brute force. If you're using guard duty, which is our automated threat detection service, you'll see a lot of SSH brute force and port scan findings, um, which will also get populated in Security Hub show up. So, you know, this for the purpose, you know, of this demo, let's say that this happened because of a bad change, maybe you use CICD with Terraform or CloudFormation to deploy at your security groups. And for some reason, you know, you had a default option to allow it open everybody for testing and it got promoted up to your prod environment. Here is where we are. So John, if you want to take it from here, how we go to Ops Genie? Sure thing. So from here, we can click on this finding. And in the upper right hand corner, we have a custom action to send an HTTPS request to Ops Genie. So once we select that action, a new alert will be generated in Ops Genie. So now if I refresh the, the page here, we get the alert from AWS Security Hub. Um, and the alert itself includes all the pertinent information that a responder user will need to take action on this alert. So Ops Genie provides the responder users with actionable information um, in the shortest amount of time possible to make sure that they can handle uh, th this request appropriately. So down below, uh, we have some key details uh, regarding this finding. So we can actually see the security group ID in question, the security group name, we can see the severity level, as well as some other key values. For example, uh, this automatically generated an, ish, an incident in Jira Service Desk. So we have the reference, uh, the, the issue key for Jira Service Desk to reference here if needed. So as this alert came in to Ops Genie, it actually notified our SecOps team so if we open up the SecOps team dashboard, we can take a look and see exactly who was notified. So here, this routing rule points to this particular escalation, and this escalation is notifying this on-call schedule down below. So for this particular alert, Glenn was notified, and he can take action on this alert, um, either directly from his phone, from the web app, or from a chat ops tool, such as Slack, Microsoft Teams, et cetera. Um, so from here, again, as that user was notified, you also have the ability to see the alert logs. You can see exactly who was notified um, and what happened with this alert for this particular scenario. Now, inside of Opsgenie's teams, you can set up action channels, and action channels are ways of automating certain um, repetitive actions in Opsgenie. So you, you can do a number of things, such as integrating with AWS Systems Manager, uh, AWS SNS, or you can just post to a, a REST endpoint. Um, so you can trigger these actions automatically or by the click of a button. So what we're going to actually do here is we set up an action to disable public access for that security group in question. And all we're going to do is, is essentially we integrated our uh, AWS account with our Ops Genie account. And from there, we're pulling in all of the systems manager uh, automation documents that are able to be run. So for this particular scenario, we're going to run this disable public access for security group um, automation document. And then from there, once you click on next, you're given a specific group of parameters um, for this particular action. So for the group ID, we're actually going to prompt the responder user for that value. 
um, and this is the IP address that we're going to go ahead and block. So now if we go back to that, go back to that alert, in the upper right hand corner, you will see the various actions that you can take on the alert. So you can add a responder, you can escalate to the next user, but down below, you'll see that custom action that we built out to disable public access for the security group. So down below, we have that security group ID. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that value. So if we go ahead and execute that action, it will prompt us to put in the security group ID here. And then now we can click execute. In the lower left-hand corner, it has told us that the action has been successfully executed. So now if we go back to the security group panel here, we can see that uh, this IP range here is currently um, open and allowed. But if we go ahead and refresh the page here, that, that, that particular range um, has now been removed and public access has been disabled for this particular security group. All right, excellent. Thanks for the demonstration, John. So, you know, to recap, we were able to send that specific finding for uh, that 4.1 failed control over to Ops Genie. From Ops Genie, we invoked AWS uh, Systems Manager, and we used a uh, automation document to uh, block the public access. Now, that is extensible. Uh, we did, you know, we blocked 0.0.0.0/0, um, but you could also extend that for custom rules within Ops Genie. Maybe you have a security group that's open to a known uh, threat IP that you get from a threat intelligence platform or from your own Omnipots or something like that, um, or maybe it's just a disallowed uh, IP address in particular um, that you could do. Now, that might necessarily not come from security group. It could come, you know, from other feeds into Ops Genie, but that is another option. Um, and speaking of threat list, if you want to go into our uh, next finding, John. Sure. All right, so you see this one on the screen, title EC2 instance communicating with disallowed IP address. So where this comes from is again from guard duty. Uh, in particular, it's an unauthorized access EC2 slash malicious, malicious IP caller dot costume. So that finding informs you that an EC2 instance in your AWS environment is communicating outbound with an IP address included on the threat list that you uploaded to it. So in guard duty, a threat list consists of known malicious IP addresses. Again, if you're taking advantage of a threat intelligence platform, uh, maybe using an open source tool like Shodan, or maybe you have your own honeypot set up, or you're just collecting uh, other port scans that you're getting from guard duty. Um, so this one in particular, you know, for our scenario, again, let's just say we left 4.1. 4.1 control failed because we had SSH open to the world. Somebody compromised your instance, and this could represent them communicating to a known command and control node. Um, and we could also remediate this using Ops Genie. Uh, so, John, you want to take us through that? Sure thing. So I'm going to go ahead and select this finding here and then send this to Ops Genie. So now if we go back to the option alert console and do a quick refresh, we now have the, the alert um, that was also escalated to our NOC team, or sorry, our, our SecOps team. And we have all the pertinent details below. So you can actually see uh, the subnet ID for this particular finding. Um, and you can also see, again, this also generated a Jira service desk incident. Um, if you want to use Jira service desk as the single source of, of record for this particular incident. Uh, but from here, again, the SecOps team was notified for this particular incident, so they can take action on this alert um, directly from, again, whether the, what's the, their web app, their phone, um, they can take action from here. What we actually went ahead and did was we set up a custom action um, titled Isolate Threat. So when we click on this button, this is actually going to execute, um, it's actually going to execute a webhook integration which this webhook integration is directly interfacing with an API gateway within AWS, and that API gateway uh, is triggering a, a Lambda function, which will, which will indeed isolate this threat here. So within this webhook integration, we are telling it um, that if the custom action isolate threat is executed, then go ahead and post to the webhook uh, down below. So if I'm the responder user, I can come in here I can hover over the action section here 
and I can select isolate threat. Now from there, um, it's going to, again, interface with that API gateway to trigger the Lambda function. Here is the, uh, the, the Lambda function here. Um, John, if you wanna walk through, I guess, some of the logic within this code and, and exactly what it's doing. Sure, um, so you can see that it's from the Lambda handler, it's printing out the event, so it's grabbing the alert uh, that you posted uh, through the API gateway. So the things that it's looking from in the alert is the uh, threatless IP. So guard duty will tell you the uh, IP address and specific within your threat list. Maybe, you know, you probably have dozens in there. So you don't know which one in general. Maybe you just have a single IP and a single threat list. Um, so we will loop through that and grab that from the actual security hub finding. And same thing with the subnet. So we have a AWS CC2 instance um, resource type already modeled in the Amazon security finding format, which every AWS security hub uh, finding is in. So we grab that subnet and then you can see we're using some Boto3 clients because this is a Python 3.7 function. Um, we're gonna kick off a client for EC2, one for security hub and uh, one for an EC2 resource. So it goes down and using the subnet ID, it loops through and finds what network ACL is actually attached uh, to the VPC that instance is in or to the subnet that instance is in rather. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, a uh, network ACL is a stateless firewall essentially uh, where you would need to set up um, you know, ingress and egress rules that you could either allow or block. So this one in particular, we're actually putting in um, to deny rules for ingress and egress for that threat list IP. And then towards the end, we're actually gonna update the oxygen alert. So, so when you're in the console as a SecOps user, when you're taking action on this particular finding, you know, or maybe somebody else on your team, they'll see it. It's like, okay, hey, we already, you know, did the isolate threat. And, you know, this is a very basic one. We're just shutting off access at the edge uh, with our NACL. So that, you know, calls that are outbound or calls that are coming inbound, you know, maybe they set up some malware and, you know, it's pinging the command and control node or something like that, you know, that'll stop it. Obviously, you know, you'd want to go a step further, maybe run some um, digital forensics type playbooks, maybe you're using an IOC scanner, you want to do some memory capture, you might want to drop the ENI, you might want to take a snapshot of the EBS volume to reattach it to a forensic um, workstation. So there's countless options, but this is the most basic one to immediately, you know, just end the threat. And uh, John, if you want to go back through the alert now that it's been appended with some of that extra data. Sure. If we click the refresh button on the, on the alert itself, we have the note added that the malicious IP was blocked on the network ACL. And there, there's a few other different things you can do um, when communicating back to the optioning alert. So all we did here was we added um, a note to the alert. However, if, if once that IP is blocked, maybe you just want to close out the optioning alert, you can, you can also do that from here. So instead of just sending a request to add a note, you can say, okay, if this IP was successfully blocked, then go ahead and close out the optioning alert. Or maybe you want to add um, some additional information to the, to the alert. Maybe you want to add in a, a key value pair here, or maybe you want to add a tag um, for some categorization that will help with reporting. Um, there's a lot of different contexts that you can't add to the alert uh, once this Lambda function was successful. Yeah, very good. And again, you know, these are outbound webhooks that are going in an API gateway with Lambda behind it, and it doesn't necessarily need to be Lambda behind it. And your Lambda function does not need to be as simple either. Um, you know, like John alluded to, you could call other enrichment actions. Maybe you wanted to, you know, if you had a, that instance that was compromised was a systems manager managed instance for, you know, for instance, <laughs> that's a lot of instances. Um, you could call, you know, uh, Systems Manager APIs to maybe, you know, pull in some telemetry about the SSM agent and uh, associations. And, you know, as you go through your investigation, you might find that, hey, this instance failed our inspect checks to make sure that, you know, our EDR solution or our agent is running on the instance, or maybe that it was running a vulnerable uh, version of Nginx, or, you know, maybe somebody just spun up a couple Docker containers on the box. You know, there's all sorts of different things that you could do uh, just using API Gateway and Lambda triggered from Ops Genie. Yep, yeah, so uh, again, not only can you interface directly um, using the, the webhook integration, but you can also utilize um, the, the native 
uh, REST endpoints using the option, the actions, as well as the automation documents uh, directly built into to Systems Manager for all sorts of automation um, with AWS and Opsgenie. All right, great. Uh, I guess let's click into the network ACL just to show that we indeed blocked this uh, IP address. Yep. And yep, you could see there uh, our rule 72 that IP address is blocked in Renacl. And that about does it. Um, you know, you can set these things up to be automatic. Uh, so, John, if you wanted to click back into the Security Hub console sure. um, and then go into Settings, and then let's go into Custom Actions. So, when you set up this Ops Genie integration um, or any other one of our partner integrations, you know, typically they'll be providing you, you know, some sort of documentation. Maybe it's a easy on toggle. A particular Ops Genie does provide, you know, the walkthrough within Ops Genie and it will, you know, dynamically populate a CloudFormation template for you. Um, the way that custom actions works are you could see that every custom action has an arm and you could set up a CloudWatch event um, that listens for this ARN in particular being triggered from Security Hub, which then invokes um, a target, just like any other CloudWatch rule. Um, in our case, you know, it's sending an outbound request to Ops Genie. Uh, maybe from custom actions, you could directly call a Lambda function, but you could also rewrite your uh, CloudWatch events in a way that instead of using the custom action detail type, you could use imported findings uh, detail type and create different rules for, you know, to match on a specific finding, a specific finding title. Um, you could burrow down and, you know, key through the ASFF format to, you know, just like this, how we sent off that alert to Ops Genie, which in turn kicked off that isolate threat work workbook. Um, you could also set something up that just does it automatically. A security hub finding of a specific type that you, you know, specify shows up. And then it'll just immediately trigger that Lambda function or trigger that outbound uh, HTTPS call to some sort of endpoint. Yep. Thank you, John, for mentioning that. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because you can also automate um, the, uh, the actions in OpsGenie as well. So for this alert here, we went ahead and viewed the actions here and manually um, ran this action by clicking on it. However, you can also create rules within your teams to say, if we receive an alert with the word communicating with disallowed IP addresses, maybe you want to run that action um, automatically. You don't want to wait for any user input. You can actually do that within your teams by going to policy, oh, sorry, going to policies, and then down below, um, going to action policies. So you can actually say, if we, go, if we have um, an alert that matches the following criteria, then go ahead and uh, execute a, a particular action. Um, with this name. So we, you can actually go ahead and execute that isolate threat action automatically when some certain criteria is met. All right, great. Thanks again, John, um, you know, for walking through extra pieces of Ops Genie.